first you want to open your PDF file of the mask. There's two halves. This is the right side. Go to print, select your printer, actual size, landscape, print and gray and grayscale, black and white, and print. So you want to print this half and the other half. So now that you have the two halves printed out, you can cut it down the center. There you have it your full face mask. So at this point you can tape it together. If you want, you don't have to. And you want to get your leather wet. All right, so now that you have your leather a little bit damp, you can place your pattern over the leather, and if you need to, I don't usually do this, but you can tape it down just so that it doesn't move anywhere, and you can start creasing it. So you want to trace every line until you're done. Okay, now that you have everything traced out, you can go ahead and take the pattern off. And there you have the outline of your mask. So at this point, you can go ahead and cut out the mask. There you have the cutout. Now from here you want to take your swivel knife and retrace the entire mask with the swivel knife. So once you have everything outlined with a swivel knife, it should look something like this. So you want to get your beveling tools. So I have medium and small, and a large. I don't usually use the large. Actually, I don't use the, <coughs> usually use the medium. I use the large. <coughs> and you want your rawhide mallet and a tooling book. Right now, I only have this one. The other one's upstairs and two ways to get it. So you can start outlining it with the beveling tool. Um, it's a little tricky to know what side to um, tool on. But um, you'll get it. So let's get started here.
before tooling, if your leather isn't wet enough or damp enough, you can just reapply a little bit of water either to the whole thing or to the location where you feel like. Alright, so there you have a messy tool job on mask. So if you want it perfect, you take your time, make sure all the lines are smooth, make sure all the lines are lined properly. And the next step is to cut out the punch the holes. So I have a, a little punch, I don't know if you can see that. And I'm punching the nose holes right now. So where you sew it up the bridge of the nose. Next, we'll go to the largest punch and punch out the holes where these straps are gonna be. Again, I'm doing this very quickly. Please take your time. Have patience. Next is the breathing holes. So if you have a hand punch or one of these punches, use either or. Um, this one's probably easier with getting deeper into the leather. So you can just get some leather, put it under your piece so you don't ruin your punch. There you go. Okay, so we have the holes punched out. Um, on the pattern, there's actually a dotted line just under the, the nose. Um, so, you have to cut that out as well. Be very careful cutting out, especially with sharp knives. If you don't have one of these, just a regular X-Acto knife will do. Okay, so there's a little bit of a gap there. It's for uh, shaping purposes. So before I'm going to dip it in the water solution, I'm going to just prep the edges. So I've got my edge tool and just go around the perimeter of it, making sure it's nice and roundish. So these are just my text techniques. You can go online and search what other people do, professionals, how they do it. 
This is just how I do it. This is how I taught myself. Probably not the right way. I'll probably get laughed at. But it works for me, so I keep on doing it. And most of these tools that I'm using, you can buy probably as a kit or like somewhere cheap or garage sales. Uh, Tandy Leather pretty much has all this for relatively cheap if you're just a beginner. Next step is before dipping it is stitching up the bridge of the nose. This is what I do before actually putting it into the water. It just makes it easier when you're uh, molding it. So it doesn't really stretch the holes when you thread it up afterwards, after it's wet. Okay, so I have the nose stitched up. So this is just temporary. You want to cut this off after everything's all dried and set. All right, ready for a dip. All right, so this is my method of dipping. Just water and Elmer's glue all mixed up. I'm gonna place the piece in there. Make sure it's saturated quite well. So after, um, it's all shaped and dried, um, and painted and dyed. You do have the option of using a, a wax mix or a beeswax to saturate the back to get a little bit more firm, more stiff. And that way it'll be uh, more water resistant in the end too. And keep it shaped. That's probably good for demonstration purposes. Probably leave it in there for another few minutes Drip off the excess and let it dry for a bit. All right, so once it's dried for a little while, um, you can also use a heat gun to kind of dry it off, make it a little bit more uh, moldable. So I usually just start with the, the nose first because it's the most trickiest. So you know how we cut a little slip there before? Well, that goes, actually goes on the inside. So it kind of flips in. Pinch the nose down. At the same time you're pushing the bottom up so it kind of makes that nose type uh, shape there. So after that, um, you can either let it dry a little bit more, use a hair dryer, or heat gun to make it a little bit drier. It's kind of, so it kind of keeps your shape. And then either move on to the cheekbones or the lower jaw. And chin. So, Kind of OCD of trying to make everything perfect, perfectly symmetrical, but since this is a rush job, 
and not everything is perfect, it's not going to happen. Okay, so I got pretty decent shape for the cheekbones, the jawline. So as it's drying, it'll take a little while to dry, like completely, probably a good 24 hours, unless you use a heat gun, but I like to let things dry naturally, or close to a heat register anyway. Because um, if it dries too quickly, it'll go all wonky on you. So throughout the drying process, you want to come back and kind of reshape it, work a little thing, work a few little things out of it, try to get to the shape that you want. And something that you're happy with. So that's all right right there. I'll probably come back to it and kind of reshape a couple things. Make certain things more pronounced like the teeth. But for the general uh, shape of it, it's it's all right. Not, not great, but it's all right. It'll do for now. So let's let that dry for a little bit longer before I um, give it more detail. All right, so I attacked it with the, hair, um, the heat gun. And you just wanna make sure you don't get too close, otherwise it'll start bubbling up the leather. You don't really want that. And um, just you know, keep a good eight inches, 10 inches away from it and moving it often. So. so you can see by the color it's drying pretty good. Probably a good time to actually uh, start shaping other things like the teeth. You just want to be careful because it isn't fully dry yet, so it will ruin some of your shape if you manhandle it too much or woman handle it too much. So a little bit more shape to the teeth, front teeth. So you're just pushing behind to where the teeth are or the object or the piece that you want more depth to. So just pushing behind it. Individual teeth. Cheekbone. Another cheekbone. Jaw. And then forming it back to the mannequin head. It's a lot easier with the mannequin head. If you don't have one, not a big deal. You just use your own face and just your hands and make sure to try it on periodically throughout the uh, drying process to make sure it still um, forms to your face. All right, so I like that. So I'm just gonna let that dry. And after it's dry, you can take off the thread on the bridge of the nose and paint it.